Hi everyone, my name is Ant. Today I want to talk with you about Dynavis 3, different NPU inference run and so on. I think Dynavis 3 was released just a few weeks ago and there was a lot of questions where people asked me about it. Actually I experimented with it a little bit and I just want to summarize my thoughts and some experience of running it. What is Dyna V3? Dyna V3 is a very powerful backbone model where they used millions and millions of images to train just this pretty simple task of self-supervised learning. For many tasks this backbone works out of the box where you just can take features, train a liner classifier and it will work. They mentioned that it will work great for not only for classification but also for segmentation, detection, depth estimation and so on and so on. However, you should keep in mind a couple of important points that can tell you about where is the limitation. Dynavi3 is not a universal backbone. If your domain is highly specialized, medicine, maybe some agriculture, biology, v 3 may not have strong pre-training specifically for it. And uh, they released actually specialized pre-train only for one domain, it's satellite imagery. The second problem, datasets are matter. If you train in, for example, like detector, and you have a lot, a lot of variety, what you should detect in which cases, how you should react on different situation. This is what you need to train manually. And you need to collect this data set that will tell your model how it will work. Maybe the only data set you shouldn't train, it's the depth estimation data set for regular view. But of course, if you want like to measure real depths, you need a lot of data specifically in your situation where you will fine tune this depth estimation. So v 3 is definitely great by bone. It will reduce your error for a lot of uh, cases. It will reduce your data set size for a lot of cases. Uh, but actually it will not solve your computer vision task out of the box. Previously, we used Dyna V2 for a lot of tasks. It's worked quite well. And in my opinion, there are two important parts which make in Dyna V2 better than Dyna V3. First of all, it's of course license. I don't want to go deeper in it, but uh, Dyna V3 has much more permissive license than Dyna V3. And the second, it's ability to run Dyna V3 on different NPUs. For this experiment, I actually just benchmarked two like most popular NPUs that you can have today. It's Intel NPU and AMD NPU. For all of these NPUs, I used only the, almost the same code. And also I used like the regular NVIDIA GPU and the regular CPU. Here, like a few different samples, how they divided with each other. Of course, like for AMD NPU, there was a little bit more complexity because they require a little bit more initialization of this NPU. And the results were quite interesting because Intel NPU, it could run kind of next version of v 3 but couldn't run transformer-based version. And for AMD NPU, it couldn't run any version of v 3 I tested it with the different framework version, but none of them work. And actually this result is much worse than it was with v 2 And v 2 it was pretty stable, but with v 3 actually you need like either smaller neural network Either you need some GPU or mm, CPU, 
but with NPU it's pretty hard to run in this model. Anyway, it's a great new model, you can distill it, you can run on NVIDIA, you can use Jetson as your edge device, so definitely a good model, definitely a lot of application can be unlocked right now, definitely you can have better accuracy for some demo mods for some one-shot learning cases, but it's not something like super groundbreaking and it's not super useful for your edge application. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching. Bye.